That way, if you finish early, you can leave. <clears throat> Let me begin with a word of prayer. So, Dearly Father, we uh, thank you for this day again. I thank you for this class, and thank you for these students. Just ask you to bless our work today. Help us to uh, just glorify you in what we do, Lord. In your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. So I need to talk to you guys about differentiation with side conditions. <clears throat> That's the thing we haven't talked about just yet. And um, so I think the following example um, is perhaps, uh, perhaps helpful. So, <clears throat> so this is differenti partial differentiation partial derivatives with uh, side conditions. Now that said, this title doesn't quite do it justice because even my first example isn't really that. My first example is kind of like more um, elementary. So here's example one. Um, I've got W um, x, y, z is equal to 1, let's say, all right? Then on the one hand, I can go, okay, so like w is equal to, uh, well, 1 over x, y, z, right? So what's that tell me partial w, partial x is? Well, I got what? I've got minus 1 over x, y, z quantity squared times partial partial x of x, y, z. What's partial partial x of x, y, z? y, z. So it looks like I've got a, uh, a minus y, z over x, y, z squared. And, and of course, you could simplify that, but I'll just leave it like that, okay? Okay. So that's one thing. But how about this? I could also solve this. Um, uh oh. Ah, oh, see, that's not what I wanted. My bad. I guess that's fine. Sorry, I have di I di I've digressed from my notes. Now I need to think harder about. Um. Oh man. Just give me a second, guys. For the record, I did look at this before class. <laughs> um. All right, all right. I'm going <clears> to, <throat> let's see here. I'm sorry, guys. I just can't see how to fix this at the moment. That's not wrong. What I'm erasing is not wrong. It's just not helpful for my, my current purposes here. So let me just follow the notes directly as to keep myself out of trouble. So in my notes, example 4.77, I have um, W equals XYZ. All right. So then I take the differential of this and I get DW is YZ DX plus xz dy, um, finally plus xy dz, all right? Okay, fine. Then, um, on the other hand, I say, well, I could solve for z, right? I could also solve for z. I've got z is equal to what? Well, w over xy, right? Agree? Z is w over xy. Um, so, from that, I get dz is what? From this, I get dz is like uh, uh, dw over xy 
um, minus w over xy squared. So I'm, I'm partial differentiating with respect to x here, so times y um, dx and minus w over xy squared times x um, dy, all right? So here, both, both of these cases, I, I did what? What, did, what am I doing here? I'm taking the total differential, right? Total differential. All right. <clears throat> so, all right. Um, these two different total differentials, um, <clears throat> What do they suggest? So I guess my question then is, finally getting to my question here. So this is the question. What is partial z and partial x equal to? All right. Now, what did I tell you guys the other day? I told you that you can look at the total differential, right? And um, <sighs> oh, my bad. So. I, did one, I need one more step. I, I missed my, my notes. I missed one more step. So I can solve this, right, for dz. What do I get? Let's see here. So this gives me dz is, <coughs> excuse me, goodness gracious, dw minus yz dx minus xz dy, all divided by uh, apparently xy. Right. So what would what would be partial z partial x here? Okay, so oh, and I, uh, fine. I'm now I'm starting to remember. <laughs> so sorry. So my point to you is, if you take the, all right. So my point to you is, if you take this, let me let me call this equation one. Sorry, this the whole point of this example is to show a confusion, right? So <laughs> there's a natural danger here that is I get confused before it's time, right? <laughs> so here's one and two. My point to you with the blue equation is that these are the same, it's not like these are at odds, okay? Like if you can rearrange the first one algebraically, you get the second one. Do you see this is the same? Like I've got dw over xy. Simplify this, I've got yz over xy. That, if you look at this, now y is, y is like minus yz over xy versus w over xy squared. Are those equal? What was w? Remember? XYZ, right? So how does that simplify? There's a minus here in this one too, right? So you see how that simplifies. You got the um, <coughs> YZ over um, XY, I believe. Because the one of the copy of the XYs cancels um, and I, I dropped something, didn't I? What did I drop? Do you guys see what I dropped in my verses? See what I missed, guys? I was trying to compare um, the, the coefficient of dx for both of these, right? Yeah, I missed this y right here. So that's supposed to go here. And when you put that there, what happens? 
well then this just cancels it off with yz. My point to you is that in fact algebraically these are equal, right? The two different expressions for dz are equal, right? As long as we con consider this relation between w, x, y, and z, right? Okay, so <clears throat> up here, if I look at from, from the perspective of one, from the perspective of one, I would say that partial z partial x is equal to zero. If I just look at this, because when I write this, I'm thinking of x, y, and z as independent variables. So partial z partial x is zero if z and x are independent variables, right? But on the other hand, if I look at either, you know, either the blue equation or the two equation, well, what does two tell me? Two tells me partial z partial x apparently is, uh, well, it's minus wy over xy squared. So how can we have this? How can we have on the one hand the appearance that partial z partial x is zero, on the other hand the appearance that partial z partial x is minus wy over xy squared. How, what, what's the, what's the rub here? Now remember that, the, do you understand what I'm doing? Remember we had this general theorem like if we have, if we take the differential of a function uh, then we get like partial f partial x1 dx1 plus partial f partial x2 dx2 partial f partial xn dxn. So what, what, I'm, what I'm using here guys is that if I have <coughs> if I have and, and um, in here I'm assuming that like f is, is e w is equal to f of x1 through xn for that discussion, right? So if I have a differential the meaning of the coefficients is the partial derivatives. With that idea in mind is what I'm saying from the, on the one hand looking at one by assumption x and z are independent and yet from two partial x partial z partial x is minus w y over x y squared. How can we have both of these? Like we can't have both of these, right? What's the problem? What are, yeah, what are the assumptions is really the question. So the difference is here, the, the difference here is with, with one, to give you a more complete calculation, what I'm not, I'm not, you don't just calculate partial z partial x in isolation. Okay, partial derivatives are done with respect to a whole ensemble of variables. You have to know the totality of your variable set to me, have a meaningful partial derivative. That's what I'm running up against here. So this notation is insufficient. This notation is ambiguous. Ambiguous? Yeah, ambiguous. So like, to be more honest, it's partial z partial x holding what? Well, looking at one, holding what? Holding y and z as independent. And over here, in contrast, that's from two, where when I write this differential relation here, I have in mind that um, w, x, and y are independent. So the other ones here are w and y. See, so they're not, they're not the same partial derivative. They're only the same partial derivative in as much as you use the sloppy notation partial z partial x as if that means something. All right? Now when does partial z partial x, and you're like, but you've been writing partial z partial x, right? Fair enough, you got me. What's the context in which I've been doing that? I've been doing that in the context where we view z as a fixed function of x and y, right? In that context, there's no need for this notation, which is often the context that we find ourselves in. But <clears throat> as soon as you find yourself with a problem where you've got variables and perhaps there's no clear, um, there's no clear idea which one is dependent, which one's independent, at that point, this, differential, this partial differentiation where you're declaring the set of independent variables becomes very important just to make sense of problems. Let me show you another example. Maybe this will make it make more sense. If I've got um, <coughs> PV equals to NRT, all right, where N and R are constants, then you'll see sometimes a problem in a book that says this. Partial P, 
partial t times partial t, partial v, um, partial p rather, times, let's see here, I did it wrong. I gotta make these partial t, partial v maybe, and then partial v, partial p equals to something. All right. Uh, wouldn't it be one? Uh, very, that's a wonderful answer. It's a wonderful answer. Let's see if that happens. Wouldn't it be one? Uh, Sir Roger Penrose says that's one of the fundamental confusions of standard calculus. Let's find out how this goes. So, of course, <coughs> What we can do is we can, we can take the differential of this, actually. Um, fine, I won't do that. I'll do what is partial p partial t. Let's just do that. So you've got what? Partial partial t of what? Solving for p, what do I got? I've got nRT over v, right? So what's this partial derivative? It is, let's see here, nR over v. On the other hand, if I calculate partial t partial v, what's that? If I solve for t, what do I have got? I've got partial partial v. Solving for, uh, where was I? Solving for t, I've got pv over and r, right? That's my, that's t. If I solve for t in the above equation. And when I differentiate that, I get p over n r, right? Well, these derivatives are kind of boring, aren't they? What's partial v partial p? That must be, surely that's interesting. Partial v partial p. How's that go? Well, we're looking at partial partial p. Um, and v is n r t over what? Minus, not minus, my, I'm a dummy. Uh, what was I solving for? V, right? Uh, over P, right? Okay, so then what? Well, this is what? <clears throat> ah, now we've got an interesting derivative, right? So this is minus NRT over p squared, right? So what happens when we multiply these guys? So partial p, partial t, partial t, partial v, partial v, partial p, apparently is nr over v times p over nr times minus nrt over p squared. How's that simplify? Looks like we've got some nRs canceling, right? And what did you guys tell me was how to simplify? Negative nRt over pv. Minus nRt over what? pv. pv? All right. And what's pv equal to? Do you guys know what this is? What is pv equals nRt? Do you guys know? It is the ideal gas law. Very good. Physics major? Never mind. Impossible. <laughs> See here. Uh, I mean, we're not online, so it's not possible. Right? Oh, well, my computer's on. Maybe we're online. I don't know. Google's probably listening to us right now, right? But it's okay. They have our best interest in mind. There's no need to fear big tech. <clears throat> It's not like they can just ruin people's lives without, you know, any kind of pushback from the government or anything. They don't have that kind of power. Let's see here. So, ooh, so sorry. You were close. But that's weird, right? Because you want to think about the partials kind of canceling, right? But here's the, let me, let me just show you. Okay, so like, 
On the other hand, we could just take the total differential of this, right? And we would have what? We would have like, you know, um, VDP plus PDV is equal to NR because we're not letting N and R be, be variables here, DT, right? So on the, one, on the one hand, you could solve this for like DP is equal to, well, like minus PDV over V um, plus NR over, over V DT, right? And the thing is, from the perspective of this right here, what does this say? This says partial, uh, partial P, um, for instance, partial P partial T is what? Oh, that's not what I want to say. Um, <clears throat> my bad. Uh, what I wanted to say was, this says partial T partial V is what? I'm having trouble getting confused. I'll, I'll get it eventually. So partial T partial V in the perspective of this equation would be, would be zero. And yet, we said partial T partial V here was what? P over NR. So this is what the case is if we're doing what? If T and V are independent, right? So to be more honest here, what are we actually calculating? Now you could argue here that the context makes it clear, so you don't really need to do this, and, and maybe you're right. Um, but we're holding T and V as the variables here. Here I'm holding P constant. Here I'm holding T constant, right? So the other variable that's being held independent. See, this is a weird calculation because the things we're multiplying, the choice of independent variables is different for each expression. Here I'm using independent variables T, V. Here I'm using independent variables V and P. Here I'm using independent variables P and T. This one, I'm taking P to be the dependent variable, then T is the dependent variable, then V is the dependent variable. Right. This notation I'm showing you is not in Stuart. At least it wasn't the last time I looked, which might have been 15 years ago. But um, <clears throat> anyway. So how can we differentiate? So there's, th th but listen, th this danger I'm talking about it's not so much a danger, as long as you are careful. Really? <sighs> so sorry, guys. I really want to take that call because that guy's probably going to do the drywall in my basement. And like, that would be amazing because I don't know if you've ever tried mudding drywall, but it's like unpleasant. And this guy's like pretty good and fast and stuff. And I really, really want to take that call. But I'm not. Calculus 3 is important. So let's go on. Um, <clears throat> but he's going to call back. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, let's go, let's go on here. What I need, though, guys, for, to seal the deal here. Ah. There we go. So, <coughs> all right. Oh. Let us work. Let's work another example here. So I still haven't. I have not really showed you yet a differential equation with si with a side condition yet, have I? Up till now, all of my examples really have just been a matter of you know, um, which variables we're considering to be independent, right? So um, here's, here's an example, three. On the one hand, I have W is X plus Y plus Z. All right, but on the other hand, I'm also up against the rule that X plus Y equals to WZ. All right. So this kind of thing we haven't we haven't really tried our hand at yet. So what I want to show you is how to calculate partial w partial x. Okay, so with this in mind, calculate 
partial W, partial X, holding on the one hand um, Y fixed, but on the other hand holding Z fixed. All right. So I just want to show you how to calculate, calculate these. There's, a, there's like two basic methods I have in the notes. The one is to take the differential of everything involved and kind of just do like kind of solving and substituting at the level of the differentials. The other is to just attack it straight on with an understanding of using the chain rule as appropriate. So how do we use the chain rule as appropriate? Well, we have to understand what's a function of what. So here, let's look at this. Like what's the blank template we're drawing on? You could think about this as being a pair of equations in R4. Four dimensional space where you have variables x, y, z, and w. So in four dimensional space, if you have two equations, right, two equations in four dimensional space, what you're left with is a two dimensional space. All right? For example, here's the counting, right? In, um, in three dimensions, if you have one equation, right, that's a level surface, which is two dimensional, right? So the counting is three minus one. Um, three minus one is equal to two. If I'm in four dimensions, four minus two is equal to two. So this would actually, there's some surface which is defined by these two equations. So on that surface, I can either use x and y, right? x and y as the var independent variables, or I could use x and z as the independent variables. If I do that, that makes um, z and w dependent on x and y, all right? And over here, we would have w and um, y dependent on which ones? On x and z. You see the, there's the rub, all right? If you ha understand these comments clearly, then you can calculate the partial derivatives that we're asked to, okay? So let me show you how that goes. It's very straight, it's really nothing more than you've already, it's, it's everything you've already done. We just have to like keep track of what's going on. Like, um, okay, so I'm trying to calculate partial W, partial X. So you could pick whichever one. I would suggest using this one, all right? What's partial W, partial X? And we're gonna do the one holding what? Holding Y fixed to start with. So I do partial, partial X. I'm going to put the bar on the differentiation just to remind myself, all right? Now, what's the deal? The deal is this, partial y partial x holding y independent, that's zero. Essentially, the definition of independent variables is that the partial derivative of the one variable with respect to the other is zero, okay? So that's, <clears throat> that's that which means that this right here gives you zero. On the other hand, we have partial, what's partial x, partial x? And then we've got partial z, partial x, right? So that was one. And this right here, well, what's the deal? We're, we're again, we're in viewpoint, this viewpoint right now, right? Yep. I am saying that x and y are the independent variables. These are different derivatives. I mean on the other one. The one beside it. That you have. This one? The red. They're both dependent on x and y. I'm not sure I understand your question yet. What you wrote in the red, you wrote that they're both dependent on x and y. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's a typo. Which one was I supposed to write? You help me fix that. What are, the, what are the independent variables for this one, X and Y? What are the independent variables for here? X and Z. I think I said Z, but I wrote Y. Let's, let's be optimistic and say that happened. Listen, partial Z, partial X here, that's not zero. Because in this context, remember, I have independent variables X and Y. What is z? z in this context is a dependent variable. z is actually a function of x and y in this context. So how do you calculate partial z, partial x? Partial 
Well, we also have this, right? What's that say? That says that um, 1 plus partial y, partial x, holding y fixed, oops, which is 0, right, is equal to partial w, partial x, holding y fixed, times z, plus w times partial z, partial x, holding y fixed. Now this, by assumption, is 0. But this reveals that, in fact, this partial z, partial x, right there, right, I can solve for that. What does that give me? So I get partial z, partial x, holding y fixed is actually equal to 1 minus partial w, partial x holding y fixed, um, divided by what, w? Well, that's kind of annoying, but um, there it is. So apparently this is actually what? If I did that algebra right, yeah. How can you have two variables dependent on x and y? If you knew x and y, wouldn't it be an infinite amount of solutions that would, be, that would satisfy that function of like z and w? You could just change both of them. Well, there's two equations. So if, if you want me to, I mean, I can. <clears throat> Let's see here. Um, all right, so if we go up to that, if you plug that equation into that equation, I've got w, x plus y is wz, right? So um, in this way, the w and the z are related. Um, Wait a minute, I'm not getting fished into this. So the answer to your question is <laughs> we're in four dimensions, right? So I have two equations. I can either solve for it in terms of, I could pick any two and try to solve for those two in terms of the remaining two. That's, so I, don't, I don't know how to answer your. You missed that there were two equations and thought you oh, 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 no, 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 two equations. That's the side condition, so in the language. So he, yeah. Why did you get that the derivative doesn't exist at w equals zero? Just because of the nature of the result? Uh, I don't know right offhand. Um, probably, I, I think I can answer that actually, because if w equals to zero, that's fundamentally incompatible with the idea that x and y are independent. In fact, x is equal to minus y when, when w is equal to zero, like this. This idea that I'm, so Violet is <clears throat> objecting to my ability to solve for two of the variables in terms of the other two. Not really, you just missed the other equation, but let's just pretend that was your question for the sake of this discussion, right? The question is, why can I solve for two of the variables in terms of the other two, right? Well, the answer is there's something called the implicit function theorem. And that implicit function theorem only holds given that you have a particular set of partial derivatives having a non-zero determinant. So the answer is, we can't generally solve for two of the variables in terms of the other two. There are conditions that are needed for t to make that solution. And uh, to answer when those conditions and where they're coming from, that's the implicit function theorem, which I cover in advanced calculus, like yesterday. But anyway, um, <clears throat> but listen, so we have now an annoying thing, right? We have what we want here. And here, so now how can we find, how do we solve for W, push W, yep. I'm sorry? Did I miss the Z? Oh, did I, I lost this Z? Yeah. Thank you. Like I was just saying before you guys asked me questions, assuming I didn't make an algebra mistake, a dumb algebra mistake. I think we found my dumb algebra mistake. Now we're good, right? So then you solve this for partial w, partial x, right? Which is just algebra. So you got like w, partial w, partial x, holding y fixed, is equal to w um, plus 1 minus, there's a z here, as I was just instructed, z partial w partial x holding y fixed, right? 
and then bring all your partial W, partial X's onto one side, we've got ourselves a W plus Z is equal to W um, plus one. And lo and behold, <coughs> partial W, partial X holding Y fixed is actually equal to W plus one over W plus Z. There it is. Which is not the formula I have in the notes because, listen guys, like the formulas can look really different because you're operating in the context where both of these equations hold true, which gives you license to do things like replace x plus y's with w times z's or other things like, you know, w plus 1 would be the same as like x plus y plus z plus 1, you know, things like that. Listen, so um, you guys asked some good questions, but I think it's probably helpful for us to look at the notes for a second here to try to unravel the rest of this example, all right? So let's do that. Because I want, I want you to understand, like, the method of calculation is not different than what you've already done. You just have to keep track of what you're doing. What is the dependent? What is the independent? Because the independent variables, the partial derivatives are zero with respect to those. But the dependent ones, well, then we have to face the music, right? We have to, we have to deal with the partial z, partial x. That's not just zero. It is, it is governed by this and by that, all right? Um, <clears throat> so let's see if I did it differently here. It should be the same problem. So partial w, partial x holding y fixed. What did I do here? <laughs> I, I sincerely hope we don't find an error in the notes right now. That would be, that would be probably about par for the course today. Let's see here. All right, so partial W, partial X. I, I chose to differentiate the X plus Y plus Z, right? I got my partial X, partial X. That's zero. And then I got this pesky partial Z, partial X, as I was just talking about. Now, did I do something smarter here than I did on the board? Maybe I did. I, we, I said I need to eliminate by substituting W into that. Oh, I decided to make the substitution algebraically. Oh, interesting. So I replaced my, I replaced the, where was it? I replaced the W, I replaced this W with X plus Y plus Z. Ah, I see, that was smart. Um, I. I was less smart on the board, and that's fine. Like, this is good for you to see that if you're not as clever, the calculation gets more like this, right? You can still do it. But at some point, you have to face the sub, you have to do this like algebra thing, right? So I did the algebra thing at the level of the derivative on the board. What's in the notes, I've done the algebra in the, in the, in the original variables. So like here, x plus y is wz, right? And then I multiplied it out. <clears throat> well, I took the differential of that equation. The differential of that equation gives me dx plus dy is equal to this differential times z plus that times dz, which I can rearrange to solve for dz, to solve for, you know, dz equals to this stuff, and then dividing by that gives me that dz is this, this, and this, which then tells me that partial z partial x is the coefficient of the x differential, which is in fact this. This is a smarter way to calculate. Um, I must have been more awake when I wrote these notes, right? So, um, <clears throat> so there's that. And so now I figured out what partial z partial x was, and then I plug it in here, and I have an answer. Now this answer, on the face of it, looks different than this, right? But are these equal? Are these the same answer? Can you guys, anybody see it? So oh, th this is actually z plus w? Yeah. And, oh, okay, so then I've got, how do you get the, but the one up front there? What did you do? So you like, so what, what you, I mean, I guess I could change this to a um, w plus z plus one minus z over W plus Z. Do you guys see that? I added zero. 
and then this gives me 1 plus 1 minus z over w plus z, right? And then by what Sam was just saying, this denominator is exactly w plus z. So they are the same answer, right? So, you know, these, these are, you know, the good news is you guys aren't grading each other's work, right? Because, like, these are tough problems to grade because the answers can look really, really different. Um, right? But it's okay. <clears throat> if I assign such a problem, I have to just think through it, and that's okay, because I can... I, know, I don't grade at 8.15 in the morning, so it's, it's, you're, you're safe, all right? So um, let's look at this other one here. On the other hand, to calculate partial w, partial x, um, holding z fixed, well, the, the story goes a little bit different here, right? I get... I still get 1 from partial x, partial x. But this time, um, this is, I have, to, I have to deal with the fact that, that y is dependent on x and z, all right? Now, on the other hand, partial z, partial x, it's not some annoying thing we have to figure out. It's just 0, because we're holding z and x independent in this one. So <clears throat> how do I figure out what partial y, partial x is? Well, what I do is, what did I do? Can you guys tell me what I did here? Hmm, where'd that come from? Using star star, huh? What was star star? Up there, that was star star. So that came from... So star star, what I did was I eliminated W. Um, I basically I eliminated W from my pair of equations to get an equation that just involves X, Y, and Z. Because once I do that, then I can tell derivatives between X, Y, and Z nicely without involving W, which is helpful for this problem. That's the beauty of the star star, which is really the differential consequence of what I just said. So like that, if I solve that for dy, Solve star star for dy, that, li that reveals derivatives of y with respect to x and z. So if you take that star star equation, you go down here. Um, <coughs> I just did nothing more than solve, I put dy over here, right? And so if I take this equation and I divide by 1 minus z, do you understand that? If I divide by 1 minus z, I have dy is equal to dx um, minus 2z plus x plus y divided by 1 minus z. And my handwriting really gets bad down here. I um, can't even draw a straight line. D, where was I? Dz. So that, the fact that you can derive this, this equation from the given set of, given pair of equations, this tells me that partial y, partial x, holding z fixed, is equal to 1. It also tells me that partial y, partial z, holding x fixed, is equal to this mess. Right? If you can find a differential, an equation between differentials, it reveals partial derivatives. As long as you know what you're holding as independent, all right? Um, so anyway, long story short, that is 1, so we get partial z, partial x is equal to 2 if we hold z fixed, right? There is another way to calculate these guys, um, which I'll get to here. Oh, we did this example already, didn't we? Woo! So there's that. Here is that example that we just, th this is the PV equals NRT example without the formula. It actually has nothing to do with PV equals NRT. Nothing to do at all. If you have, you know, f of xyz equals to zero, that means that df is equal to zero. That means that you can look at solving dx, dy, or dz in terms of the ratios of the partial derivatives of the level function, like so which means 
that <clears throat> if you hold y and z fixed, you get this quotient. If you hold x and z fixed, you get that quotient. If you hold x and y fixed, you get that quotient for the derivatives of x, y, and z respective. So when you take the product of these three guys, you end up getting a net of a, a total of minus, right? Because you get three minuses. That's where that stupid minus one came from. And then these guys be canceling. Like that. If, on the other hand, I ask you what's the, calc what's the product of partial x, partial y, and partial y, partial x for a level curve? If I had like f of x, y equals to zero, then Shane would have been right. The, part the product of partial y, partial x, and partial x, partial y is one. If we're in four dimensions, if you had a level volume, if you had a function of t, x, y, and z, and you were to calculate the appropriate like product of partials of the, uh, um, the variables where you're, you know, sort of, it looks like you're going to cancel out the one. There you would get one because you get four minuses from this calculation. So like, again, the PV equals NRT, it's, it's nothing to do with the ideal gas law actually. It's just this pattern. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. So here's, here's what I was just talking about. You have a level curve, df is zero, which means I can either solve dx is equal to that times dy or dy is equal to that times dx, which tells me that partial x partial y is fy over fx, whereas partial y partial x is fx over fy. There's a minus that canceled there and you get one. There's another way to look at these guys, though, I wanted to tell you before I pack it up here. Um, oh, look, here's, here's what I was just talking about. Goodness gracious. Look, here's the, here's, <laughs> here, here it is for the PV equals NRT. But this time I'm taking N to be a variable. N is the number of particles in the ideal gas law. Um, so if that's a variable as well, then you could calculate the product of these guys, you know, each time a different set of independent variables, mind you. You could do that. I will eventually get to what I'm looking for here. Uh, that's the implicit function theorem I was talking about. Um, oh, rats. Uh, Man, I guess I don't have it in the notes. That's unfortunate. I thought I had it in the notes. I must have skipped over it. I'm too close to it. Let me just talk about it on the board then. <coughs> so, So like, if you had, suppose you're up against like uh, x plus y plus z plus w equals to 10, and you're also up against x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus w squared equals to 100, all right? And you're trying to calculate partial derivatives in this context, all right? What I do is, I just take the differential of both of these. All right. I think the differential of both of them and then like um, if I want to Let's suppose, suppose I want to understand like what are the partial derivatives of z and w with respect to x and y. All right. So what that means is I want to solve for dw equals to blah dx plus blah dy and I want to solve for like dz equal to blah dx 
plus blah dy. That's, like, that's algebraically what I'm after. So the question is, how do you do that? See right here? What are you up against? So Emily, you should be able to do this. This is a linear algebra problem. You're, yeah, yeah, but you use linear algebra here where I don't ask you to, so it's more relevant. Your goal is to take these equations and to solve them for dw and dz in terms of the dx dy things. How do you do that? I don't know. Well, <clears throat> I could look at this, right, as 1, 1, 2x, 2y times d. Now, if you're not in linear algebra right now, you can, like, take a break. All right. Hopefully, I haven't made this problem too simple in the terms of, like, and I mean too simple in the sense that like it's impossible to do what I'm trying to do. Hopefully not. All right. Now that I write this, for those of you who are in linear algebra, can you solve for dz, d, dz dw? These are matrices, guys. Two by two matrices. Did I do something wrong? Oh, yeah, TW, thank you. Excellent comment. Very helpful. So look at this. If I just, let me just look at this symbolically. Like this is, this is matrix A, this is matrix B, right? So DZ, DZ, DW, I can solve by just doing B inverse times A times DX, DY. But this is a two by two matrix, so it's got a straight, it's got a stone cold formula for the two by two inverse, right? In particular, the formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix, A, B, C, D, is nothing more than 1 over the determinant, A, D minus B, C. Flip the diagonals. Minus is on the off diagonal, like so. Applying that here, we get 1 over 2W minus 2Z. Flip the uh, 2W minus 1 minus 2Z um, 1, and I multiply that guy by my 1, 1, 2x, 2y matrix, and then finally dx, dy. And so what I get, <clears throat> a little bit of a mess, but 1 over 2, w, 1 over 2 times w minus z, and then we got to multiply these matrices out here, so we get ourselves a, uh, well, anyway, I, for those of you who are in linear algebra, this actually should give you a clear path to find dw and dz, right? Do, I, do you guys see it, or do I need to do more? No, you see it. No, we. You just don't see it. Ah. Like like ah, stink. <laughs> Man, I had talk. Is it Majeric or Joseph? Which one? Joseph. I had talked to Joseph. He needs to get on the game. Like, come, I mean, come on, man. Well, in a simpler time, you learn these things in high school, but um, the way this works. Like this product right here, so you just multiply. This would be like dx plus dy, and this would be like 2x um, dx plus 2y dy. That would be, so this is a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 1 column vector, and that gives you a 2 by 1 column vector. Then you would take that and you would multiply it by this down here. So any, listen, the, the thing is, if you look at what I was doing, I was doing what? I was solving and substituting, right? So that is linear algebra, right? Whenever you're like solving for one variable in terms of another and you're dealing with like linear expressions, that <coughs> is nothing more than linear algebra. So if you convert it to a matrix problem, then you can use matrix techniques to simplify your, your algebra. 
And if you just, what I wrote there, if you just expand it out and collect things, I can read from that all four partial derivatives that are of interest. I can read from this, what is partial w partial x holding y fixed, partial w partial y holding x fixed, partial z partial x holding y fixed, partial z partial y holding x fixed. See, all four of those partial derivatives are simultaneously solved for by doing this differential algebra. You just need to collect things and you've got it all. So it kind of depends on what you're after. If, if, some, if some evil math professor asks you to calculate not one, not two, not three, but all four partial derivatives, well then the technique I just showed you on the board is a good one to use. But anyway, obviously I don't expect you guys to do this because I know you haven't, well I've just been informed, even the people in linear algebra don't know how to multiply matrices yet, so rah! Sorry. I will shut up. You guys want to do the quiz, I know it anyway. <laughs>